let me tell you about Eddie the Eagle, one of three movies whose names were on a list that looked so soulless I chose this movie simply because the name at least gave me a vague idea about what to expect from it. And to say that I have gotten something I didn't expect was like saying Belgium wasn't expected to get invaded by Germans during World War II. Answer me this, dear listener. Have you ever watched a sports movie before? If yes, then congratulations. You have no reason to watch Eddie the Eagle unless you're masochistic or the spawn of Count von Count. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. Eddie the Eagle is a biographical movie about Michael Edwards, a ski jumper that literally blundered his way up to British records and this alongside his goofy nature endeared him to people so much someone decided to make a movie about him. And that's about it, really. So not only this is a movie about sports, which is about as interesting to discuss as dried dog turds, it's also a biofilm. A Biofilm! The only way I could be even more removed from any possible target audience this film has is if this film also featured scat fetish. Have I mentioned that this is a British movie, by the way? Well, not like I need to, really. Anyone that knows English will recognize the distinct Britishness of the movie and that everyone talks and acts in the timed English tradition of passive aggressiveness. This makes the movie a slog to go through. From the very start, the main character comes off like a blundering, borderline autistic tosspot with no concept of personal space or integrity, and I get that he's supposed to be endearing to the viewer in that starry-eyed romantic sort of way, but instead he comes off as, well, what I've described him before, and that the movie acknowledges it doesn't make it better. Then the predictable sports movie stuff gets piled onto this, you know the drill. The lack of support from one of the parents, usually the father, the cynical trainer who slowly develops a sort of buddy relationship with the protagonist, the frat boys whose sole purpose in life is to ruin our protagonist's day. In movie's defense, it's not that badly executed, there is a sort of chemistry between the characters that makes the viewing just tolerable enough for me to actually continue talking about the movie and not just replace the rest of my ramble with me trying to create a music track using only my tongue and one foot. But yes, in conclusion, I generally try to judge movies based on a simple criterion. If I had just stumbled upon this on the idiot box or the idiot service, would I wish to continue watching it and not just switch it off to something else? In case of Barry the Ostrich, no, I wouldn't. As a matter of fact, I don't think I liked the movie very much and I doubt a lot of people will like it either. Of course, if you like watching sports movies, then it's not the worst movie out there. As far as I could care, it does portray the sport faithfully, and if you want to know about the bloke, then I think it's also not as bad. The problem, that it's not as good either, and the only things you'll remember after watching it is the irritating main protagonist, that Hugh Jackman was the only guy walking in a short and freezing weather, and a Norwegian trainer named Bjorn, and I mean he most definitely looks like a Bjorn, alright? Huh. So that's why that sauna scene reminded me of an introduction to a gay porn movie. Mm.